Well, you're gonna also. Die. How am I gonna tune it? <laughs> yeah. Like, I'm not gonna go flying around on this thing, like knowing yeah, like do a pull. <laughs> the motor might pop and I might die. So yeah. it was like, yeah, yeah. Um, especially if somebody could connect to the OTA update, and if they want to do something nefarious, be really bad. I know exactly why they're doing this too. Um, I am absolutely not commenting on this. <laughs> yeah. And I remember you being very pro race fuel for tracking the 992s. Does that sentiment apply to a stock 3RS as well or just the tuned turbo cars? Fantastic question. What up, everybody? Welcome to the Smoking Tire Podcast. Today's episode is, as always, brought to you by Off the Record. We love Off the Record, and you love Off the Record. You know how I know that? Because you tell me all the time, and I appreciate it. When you guys use Off the Record and then you uh, get out of a big ticket and you send me a little note to tell me about it, it makes my heart tickle inside. It's a true delight. Off the Record is a service that connects you with a qualified attorney in the jurisdiction in which you got that ticket that you didn't want. Not like a ticket to Taylor Swift that you really wanted, a speeding ticket or a moving violation, a ticket you don't want that connects you with an attorney that'll fight that ticket. It could mean meeting with prosecutors. It could mean going to court. It could mean doing all kinds of things that you don't want to be doing. You want a professional handling that, handling that. And off the record is going to get those points off your record. In fact, if they don't, you don't pay. It is very, very straightforward. So go to offtherecord.com slash TST or use code TSTPOD in the Off The Record app uh, for a 10% discount off all legal services uh, booked through Off The Record. Again, that's offtherecord.com slash TST or code TSTPOD on the Off The Record app. Don't don't plead guilty, get off the record. Only suckers plead guilty, and you ain't a sucker, is ya? All right, today in studio from Arizona, we've got Mitch McKee of M Engineering. He's the he's both M's in the M Engineering. Uh, we're talking about tuning as usual. Uh, Mitch is in town uh, because he's going to tune my Demand Spider four and a half liter. Uh, allegedly, uh, it can run on ninety one octane and not give up much power in the process. Up until today, it's only been able to run on race gas. So we're gonna increase my convenience level. So we're talking about the strategy of that. Plus, we're talking about tuning uh, the newest crop of hybrid sports and supercars, how the hybrid powertrains are affected by that, and what Mitch's role was in developing Porsche's E-Turbo. Very interesting stuff. We're talking about what the McLaren 750s will do, and a whole bunch of really interesting tuning questions from you patrons out there at the patreon.com slash the smoking tire podcast mitch from m engineering is in studio on the smoking tire podcast all right well welcome this is it now we're here okay now we can talk okay so we can't talk but we can't don't give away what you can sell okay that's the that's from the great white hype that's the rule okay um good to be back good to hear, yeah, have you yeah thanks I'm for excited having me back. for this week yeah. Because we're going to make my car run on pump gas. Yeah, that'll, that'll be good. Which is in theory possible. It is, absolutely. So why, why, what, I mean, oh, I'm trying to think how to, I, I don't, I mean, there's a reason that Rick sells the car the way, the way that he does. Yeah. And then there's a reason that you think that it can run on 91 octane just as well as it runs on 98 octane. Yeah. So why do you think those are both the way that they are? I think, you know, and I talked to Rick a bit about this. He does have cars now running on 91. Yes, I know. I know he does. So we can make good power with it. You know, I th part of that is he's – and he's – it's smart because he's leaving a buffer because our gas – or the gas here is just so bad. Yeah. So he's leaving that buffer and which is good. You know, it's smart, especially for, you know, a built engine and, you know, with variable fuel quality. So it's it's good to do that. Um, but we leave, you know, all the the safeties and stuff in place for not controlling all that stuff. Um, and through, you know, doing a bunch of these cars now, um, mm. we've just learned a lot of kind of new things mm. that seem to help them quite a bit. Um, 
so you know we can do it on 91 and it you know we, we might lose a touch but it's not going to be which is that's fine i yeah. mean and and i i understand even even rick told me when he sold me the engine mm -hmm. like look you know if 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 you absolutely, if you run out of the boostane and you're, you know, you're far from home or whatever, somehow, right. you know, you'll, you can get home just like go real easy on the motor. Right. Um, and, and he's like, it really is, it's, it's meant for safety, Yeah. you know, and it's a, it's a pretty serious motor. And so we just, we don't want you to have problems. And yeah. so that's why we do it. And the incremental cost of the, the stuff, it's like, whatever, who cares, right, right. Like five bucks a tank. Yeah. But but when I he said you know we can now do it on the ninety one are you interested and I was like I don't I you know I, he said send the car back I'm like I'm not sending the car back yeah. to Jersey for yeah. this I don't care that much yeah um, the cost to ship the car to Jersey and back is like the same yeah. it's like a hundred cases of fucking boost right right so but um so like what kind of like parameters are you like looking at to make it work right so now kind of what we're doing is um a bit of some cam timing stuff we're adjusting for the displacement which has been a big thing um the the displacement needs to be calculated in the ecu um it's actually like a very important part of the overall control system because it needs to know the volume to have an accurate uh, account of you know air mass and everything in the engine so by doing that and fixing, not fixing, changing some other things like with timing, um, you know, fueling stuff, we've been able to make good power and still, you know, make it safe. Okay. Um, and so we don't have to compromise any of the factory safety system, you know, the knock control systems, things like that. Um, we're simply just uh, modifying other things that make the car happy, basically. Okay. And so, you know, we can achieve that on 91, 93. Um, you know, obviously it's, it's harder on 91, but it's definitely doable. Okay. So, um, you know, when we go uh, dyno it, you, we'll before and after it, and we'll talk about the changes we've made and stuff. But um, And there will be a video of this, by the way, so we're not yeah, going to yeah, leave people so, hanging. Yeah. And do you think... Um, do you think the car will ultimately drive differently or it should drive no. really just like it drives now? It should drive exactly the same, really. Okay. So, I mean, yeah, everything should be really identical. Okay. Well, that's good. Yeah. How, so, so you said we got to, I, you need, I need to get the car with pretty low gas. You said mm -hmm. three gallons, which yeah. I can do. Yeah. So we'll do a couple dyno pulls on the, on the, the 98 octane. Yep. Right. And then. I'm going to drive a, drive it as low as I can get it, pretty much, and fill it back up with 91, right? Yeah, I mean, we can probably just fill it with, you know, we'll put, we'll bring some cans of 91, like uh -huh. f go fill them, and we can just do it on the dyno, oh, and then okay. just fill it so that it's, you know. Do you want to fill? Do I want to get cans of like 89 so it like balances? No, okay. no. All right. We'll just kind of, you'll try and get it as low as possible, and then we'll just fill it with 91 on okay. the dyno. It'll, All right. It'll. You it'll be of, fine. Yeah, it'll mix out. Okay, I I don't know. I I, I was trying to figure out how the math works. On yeah, because the volume of the tank is big enough that you know it'll it'll be fine. And then how much? I mean, this is a dumb question, but like how much f fuel go gas is in the fuel lines? Like to go from the how far do I have to drive it to get the gas from the tank to the? It's like not far, right? No. It's right there. Yeah, it's like I mean, not. I mean, we could probably do like a. 20 mile an hour drive for five seconds and it's oh really be, yeah oh, okay yeah. it's all right. quick all right so that seems like a dumb question but like at the same no, time i like, mean it's it's relative especially like when you look at things like flex fuel because if you're going from 91 to 85 right that that actually becomes a relevant thing is yeah because you're still going to have some before it transitions yeah so, yeah that's a good question and like normally I've never done a dyno tune before okay. to go the no no I've done dyno tune. I've okay. never done one to go the other way yeah. Like I took a car that normally was like, you know, a turbo car that like normally would run on 91. Right. And it was like, well, let's do a hundred tune. So you put hundred in it, but you, I right. drove it for, you know, a half hour to make sure that it was running, you know, the flowing right. the hundred. Right. But I've never gone the other way. Yeah. And honestly, the, the nice thing about doing the custom tune is that 
a lot of the time we can find power where, you know, even like, like um, we sell like OTS maps. Most tuners do, you know, but those OTS maps we make to be pretty conservative. So there is a chance that we could find even more power because, you know, it's, you know, let's say that it's not knocking and mm -hmm. we can get some more timing out of it. You know, there is there is that possibility that on the dyno we might find that like, hey, we can adjust and modify these things and get the power up a bit higher. Have you found much, because you've done a whole bunch of 4.5s now, yeah, GT3s and 718-based yeah. cars. Have you found much variation between the builds, or are they all pretty much the They're same? They're pretty much the same, okay. yeah. I mean, they make good power. Um, I'm trying to think of what the last one did on our dyno. It was a good amount. Okay. Well, I'm stoked. That'll be fun. Yeah, I'm, I'm be looking forward to it. Although it's so funny, because I... Like, on the one hand, like, yeah, it'll be way more convenient to just run pump gas. Right. Like, that's convenient. On the other hand, I sort of like that telling people that it has to run on race gas. Okay. It's like a vice signal. Like, I mean, yeah. we could make two maps. <laughs> like, so you could make it. So we could make it so that you do have to run 100. <laughs> <laughs> just, that's I mean, it's, it's a possibility. I don't, re I mean, I suppose eliminating it, but I've sort of, but you know what I mean? Yeah, like, absolutely. In the world of like, you know, exotic cars and supercars and shit, they're all so easy to drive and live with now. Yeah. They're like a little bit of vice. Like you should, no, you should see the thing I have to do with, that I have to do to deal with this car. You yeah, know? It's yeah, like, yeah. It's kind of like the brag. Yeah. Right? Yeah. I mean, we can make it hard on you if you really want. <laughs> well, if you do it, if you do it, not, here's the question: if uh, if you do it, make it run as best it can on 91, mm -hmm. and then you do a hundred tune. Mm -hmm. Will the hundred tune probably make more power yes. than it's making now? Yes. Well, that's a delight. Yeah, and we can do that. Oh well, I have plenty of boost aim. <laughs> okay. Yeah, I mean, or we can just put hundred octane, like you know, full full tank, real of gas yeah. in it. Sometimes the boost aim stuff depends on what you're using, but. It can be hard on an O2 sensors, mm -hmm. so typically we'll just stick with like an unleaded 100 octane, like VP 100. Yeah. So, because you can get some of that stuff even in California here at some stations, they'll sell it. What uh, What Rick told me was every third or fourth tank of mm -hmm. the Boostane to get to fill it up with real 100. Yeah. He yeah. said that'll that'll help with the longevity. Yeah, because it'll kind of clean it out. Yeah. Because so, like some of the stuff, like the Torco, right? It'll turn start turning things orange. Well, the boosting does that yeah, too. The so. inside of my exhaust exactly. tips. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So, so I, I have a, there's a guy who will actually come with a truck and he's got drums of it on the truck and he'll fucking, at my shop, he'll, he'll pump 100 octane for me. Oh, really? Me. Yeah, oh, that's it's cool. Not, it's not bad. Oh, well, yeah. we should do 100 it's a, then. <laughs> it's all right. Yeah. yeah. Um, so uh, my car, we'll, we'll see how that goes on Thursday. I'm sure okay. it'll go. I'm sure it'll go great. I'm yeah. very excited to yeah. to do that and go down, go back down and see. Is Craig still at World Motorsports? He is. He is. I very like much. that guy. Yeah, he's, he's a, great. He's a character. He's kind of a legend yeah. these days, you know. Yeah. So yeah. that's a. It's a great dyno facility down in uh, in Torrance, yep. uh, World yep. Motorsports. So uh, let's talk about other things. Um, the 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 one place I really want to start today is you know the we're now. We're now fully in the world of hybridized sports cars and yep. supercars. You've got Artura, you've got 296, you've got yep. E-Ray. Now we've got 911 GTS yep. uh, T-Hybrid. And um, was the thing that you told me before we started, is that confidential or can you talk no, about no, that? No, okay. no, I, I had an NDA for uh, five years, but, but it's, it's expired. Okay, cool. So you, you, to you told me right before we started the show that you were actually involved in the electric turbo that's in the T hybrid. I was, yeah, which is pretty cool. So yeah, in 2018, um, we, uh, I was still at Cobb, and we were um, approached by uh, Brock Fraser, who at the time he's retired now. He was, in, I think, in charge of the EFR Turbo series, but then um, he asked if we could help in doing the systems control for the ECU for the e-turbo that they were building and and basically patenting um and so my role in that was on the ecu side to make everything inside of the factory porsche computer happy um because all of a sudden we had a turbocharger that you know came in you know it made boost way sooner than it should have yeah. and we, At idle basically yeah, yeah so it and it's it seems to be a similar system to what they're using now. I know that Porsche did a bunch of work on it after the fact because it was, I wouldn't say rough, but it was, you know, the first kind of 
test system mm-hmm. I, as far as I know that was made. So, um, you know, we we did that and um, we worked on it for actually a while. It was a pretty complicated project, to be honest. Um, it wasn't straightforward at all. So, uh, but we eventually got it done and then that car went to basically, I think, as far as I know, other manufacturers to sh- kind of show them the technology and yeah. stuff. So Did it require... A high voltage system. It did. Okay. So it had a forty-eight volt system in the trunk. Okay. Um, and it actually had, you know, the two orange wires running to the turbocharger itself. Oh, wow. um, it was really a neat sy- system because it's the same concept of the elect uh, the electronic part of it spins the turbo up, and then once the exhaust velocity is enough, it takes over, and then you know the e turbo part of it goes away and, and then it re- and then did the one that you work on have a wastegate or is it no wastegate like the current like the actual production car has i don't think it had a wastegate yeah. no the production car has no wastegate right, right. and then so when you're coming down off the revs right the the flowing of gases it regenerates yeah, it electricity which is fucking cool as hell i think it was the same way because i believe the control company Borg Warner ended up buying that controller company, and they do a lot of EV stuff. Um, but they had built that original controller, and I do believe that it was the same way. About ninety-five percent yeah. sure. Was but, the turbo like split with the E motor in the middle too, like it is yeah, in the nine yeah. eleven? Yeah. yeah, it was like very similar looking. Um, it's a it's an unbelievable thing. I mean, yeah. driving it, it's really really good. Yeah, it's kind of hard to believe that it wasn't done sooner. Yeah, you know, but. I, I'm sure there's technical well, didn't, aspects um, of it. Who had the? Who was using the electric supercharger? Board Land, Warner. Board Warner. Yeah. But, but uh, Land, Jaguar Land, the Defender had that in the 48 volt system. They had they had an electric supercharger. Okay. There's a couple other companies. A couple other. Yeah, I know Board Warner. Mercedes. Did the, one. E, the 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 53s in line six with the electric supercharger. Right. Okay. So I suppose they got close. Yeah. Yeah. Um, but yeah, it's really really neat. Yeah. So. It, you know the 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 911. It's a it's a single turbo with the with the electric turbo. It's also got the electric motor in the PDK gearbox. Yeah. So are these cars tunable in any kind of real uh, commercially applicable way? Guys, got to take one quick break because today's episode is supported by Factor. Summer is here, and you're heading to the beach. Lots of days of activity, uh, playing in the sand, riding your bike, going on hikes, doing all kinds of stuff. Fuel up for those days with Factor's no prep, no mess meals. You can meet your wellness goals in time for summer. Thanks to the menu of chef-crafted meals with options like Calorie Smart, Protein Plus, and Keto. Factors fresh, never frozen meals are dietitian approved and ready to eat in just two minutes. So no matter how busy you are, you'll always have time to enjoy nutritious, great tasting meals. Make today the day you kickstart a new healthy routine. What are you waiting for? There's 35 meals and more than 60 add-ons to choose from every week. So you'll always have new flavors to explore. And uh, man, your day will be delicious. They've got breakfast. They've got dessert. They've got everything in between. You can stay fuels with easy, nutritious options. And also, there's every bit of support for your different lifestyles, whether it's protein, calorie smart, keto, vegan, avoiding meat, whatever. Well-balanced. Factors got it. Head over to factormeals.com slash tire50. That's tire50. And use code tire50 to get 50% off your first box plus 20% off your next month. That's code tire50 at factormeals.com slash tire50 to get 50% off your first box plus 20% off your next month while your subscription is active. We'll see. Yeah. It's hard to say because there's a – in the newer VAG cars, um, they have done what – basically the UN, of all people, passed kind of a law stating that um, there needs to be stricter guidelines for uh, gateways and, and control modules inside of cars that are built. And it's to protect about – to protect against, uh, you know, cyber attacks, like with all the – like – over the air stuff. Yeah. So now what's happening is that the gateways are being locked down. And 
it prevents you from getting to the ECU, at mm -hmm. least through OBD. So that's one side of it is kind of the security on that. And it's so new that, you know, I don't think anybody's gotten past it. But the other side of it is that we've known this is going to happen for a long time because um, just in some of the documentation I have um, and if you take the transmission off of a 992.1, they were they already cast it with space for that motor oh so we all we kind of assumed this was coming for a long time sure um and even in the documentation that i have it refers to electric motors control yeah but it's just not used so it's not a surprise that it showed up and honestly i think it's great i think it's a better way than just going full electric um i think it's a neat way to boost power you know, using newer technologies um, and still keeping the IC engine, you know. So I think it's, I think it's going to be great. I mean, we ordered one. Aside from the, you know, increase in weight, which, okay, that's bad, but it's not that much it's weight. It's pretty negligible, honestly, for being an EV system. It's, I mean, it's only like, what, 100, 200 pounds? It's maybe? 162 yeah. or 163 pounds. It's yeah. not much. No. It's not I mean, much. it's like a passenger. Yeah. Yeah. And it's, and it, uh, it does, I mean, it makes not just the performance better, but also smooths out the, the power. And, right. And like, you know, in a, in a, any other of those three liter turbo cars, mm -hmm. you, they're undrivable in normal mode. You have to put it in sport mode because yeah. it just bogs the shit out of the motor. Yeah. So it completely fixes that. Yeah. We, d I mean, we, flash um, the PDK units in a lot of cars. And mm. that's really one of people's biggest things is they don't want that shifting in normal mode, yeah. like a 1200 RPM. Yeah, it's terrible. And it's awful. So, yeah. Yeah, it's a huge complaint. So the e-motor completely fixes that. Yeah. It still shifts low, but the e-motor adds so much torque that the, the gas motor is not like loaded there. Sure. And it just, it's enormous difference. Yeah. It's huge. Yeah. But so... If you're trying to let's let's okay forget the lockdown stuff, but yeah. if, if you're conceptually yeah. trying to tune a car that has an electric uh, hybrid system, yeah, is that can, if you can you play with the things that you would play with like in my car to make power without and leave the hybrid system be, or can you not touch one without the no, other? No, we can we can we can still flash the the actual ECU for the ICE part of it. Because mm -hmm. um, ultimately it's doing still a lot of the control. Um, the other one will have a separate controller for that system. But, you know, the motor stuff, the Lambda targets, all that stuff, ignition timing, it's all still in the ECU. So, um, you know, with that new, their new strategy of the one Lambda thing, um, you know, that, that alone, you know, I'm sure a lot of people don't want to say this, but the one Lambda thing of him always just running the one Lambda, it's great for emissions, um, but that also probably means there's a good amount of power to be found just by if a tuner was to, say, make it a bit richer. Because mm -hmm. then if you can do that, you still can cool down the cylinder charge and, you you know, it lets you run more timing more boost if you want to really the big question will be is how the actual boost control is integrated if it's a separate controller or if it's into the ecu but my guess is it could still be modulated through the ecu because the ecu still has to know what the turbocharger is doing yeah you know because it's still got to estimate you know all your air mass fuel mass all that stuff you know based on the load and that load comes from the turbocharger so you know it's so still gonna have to be changed the I, I read about the one Lambda thing, mm -hmm. um, which is new for the GTS uh, T-Hybrid. A right? little bit. So the one Lambda thing has actually been around. It's like it's in the 992.1 mm -hmm. and it's in most VAG cars, newer cars. Um, they typically try to always run one Lambda. And the, the for those who don't know, what is one Lambda? It's just a good the perfect match for that fuel um between air and uh air and fuel okay so it changes based on what fuel you're using um so like it's 14.7 for gas um for methanol it's six or seven to one as opposed to 14.7 mm -hmm. um so it's just the right amount it's 
an emissions thing. So it's to keep, you know, clean air. It's the, basically the best way to keep, you know, clean air um, in terms of like emissions. So, um, you know, there is a downside to trying to run more uh, fuel. You know, it, it the car is not as clean as it would be running one Lambda. But if you tried to run one Lambda and try to increase boost pressure levels and try to increase uh, like timing values, you end up, you know, over time, you're probably going to start to do damage to the car because it's going to start knocking just because the temperature inside the cylinder is so high. So that's where a lot of the power gains can be found by making them richer is it cools all that down and it allows you to do that. And that's where a lot of power can be found. Um, so I do think that by tuning those cars, and this is just a guess because obviously we haven't tuned one yet, but I do think that there, we would end up finding that we could make a decent amount more power. The someone at Porsche told me that, that, you know, while most cars are sort of optimized to run the EPA fuel economy right, cycle, right. right, or whatever the European version of that yeah. is. But, and so they, they do a certain amount of fuel efficiency, right? And they mm -hmm. sometimes are very fuel efficient for that cycle. But then when you start driving them really fast, they need to use so much more fuel to cool the cylinder heads that they become very inefficient. Yes. But they said sort of, they didn't say on the record. They, they, they wasn't, no, it wasn't an off the record thing, but they said they can't really advertise this, but the, the new GTS is much more fuel efficient when you're driving really fast. Okay. Because of the one Lambda thing. Yeah. And that's, that's a, the kind of thing is that these, a lot of the manufacturers have been doing the one Lambda thing, but the caveat has been is what is called component protection. So if it gets too hot, if exhaust gas gets too hot, then what it does is it switches to another mode called component protection. And that's when they'll start to, like if you're driving the car really hard and the EGT gets too high, it goes into to component protection and it starts to add fuel mm -hmm. into it to cool the charge down so it cools everything down. And that's that will be the big thing for us to see is if it's no longer doing that at all, what are the long-term repercussions? And you know, according to Porsche, there's none. And that could be absolutely could be true. I mean, they're fantastic at what they do. So it's just kind of a question to see what happens there. Yeah. So it just kind of goes against, not against, but they're really going for emissions now. And it's, you know, rightfully so. And but we'll see. I, I would imagine they have a system in there to mitigate the heat because, you know, if you drive it at one Lambda, either the car's really doled down so that it, if it does get hot, then it doesn't cause any harm. Um, or they've got some other system to do that. But it'll be interesting yeah. to see. It might be sandbagged as hell. I it mean, could be. They might, they might be. That motor could be pushing 650 with a couple keystrokes. Exactly. But they're running it at 530. Right. You know. And it could be also, you know, they do it that way so that um, – let's say they want to bring in the turbo or a different variant, you know, it's easy to make some software changes and all of a sudden you've got 50 wheel more horsepower yeah, yeah. In, in a car, you yeah. know, so. Um, I mean, I wouldn't be shocked if the, you know, if the Turbo S is also a hybrid that has yeah, I hope so, the same, honestly. same version of that, but with, yeah. you know, more. Yeah. And I Probably think, will be. I think it will be. I mean, I would guess so. Because usually those technologies, you know, they use them in, it's similar cars, yeah. so now and there's, I, there's a lot of technology for one sub variant of a right. Car. Like they they're not gonna yeah. just you know probably do it in just the one car. So I would imagine the turbo would benefit pretty greatly from mm -hmm. it, um, you know, and hope they do it and hope they make you know another GT2 RS and that type of thing. So yeah. I mean it would be. Do you think? See. Do you think you'll have to adjust? Like if you turn the power up on these, do you think you'll have to adjust how the electric turbo and the electric motor and the transmission respond at all? Or are they like, is it one of those things where if they just get the signals from the engine and then they react accordingly and it's always appropriate? That's a fantastic question. Um, Guys, got to stop for a second to talk about Delete Me. Delete Me is so important. I mean, I, 
I know personally someone in my family, I don't want to say who, was a, a victim of identity theft. And uh, someone, by getting into uh, some online accounts of theirs, was able to open up multiple credit cards in a different state and even get a mortgage in this person in my family's uh, name. This was crazy. They started getting like mail, being like, you know, your mortgage is behind this and that. And the person in my family is like, I don't even have a mortgage. Like, this is nuts. Uh, online scams are just rampant. Privacy is more important than ever. And the fact that we're shopping for everything online, we're using autofill forms and everything, uh, we're such easy targets. But we can protect ourselves and get peace of mind with Delete me. So much of your personal information is out there for anyone to see. You want to go to Delete Me, right? That's where Delete Me comes in because what it is, it, it's a service, right? It's not just a website. It's a service that finds and removes any personal information that you don't want online and then makes sure it stays offline. Delete Me is a subscription service and it removes information from the largest people search databases on the web. In the process, helping prevent potential ID, sh ID theft, doxing, and phishing scams. Uh, all you got to do is sign up and provide Delete Me with exactly what information you want deleted, and their experts take it from there. Then Delete Me will send you regular uh, personalized privacy reports showing what info they found, where they found it, and what they removed. And again, Delete Me is not just a one time service. Delete Me is always working for you, constantly monitoring and removing the personal information that you don't want on the internet. So take control of your data and keep your private life private by signing up for Delete Me now at a special discount for our listeners. Get 20% off your Delete Me plan when you go to joindeleteme.com slash tire and use promo code tire at checkout. The only way to get 20% off is to go to joindeleteme.com slash tire and enter code tire at checkout. Again, that is joindeleteme.com dot com slash tire and then use code tire guys got to take a quick break for our merch store you know that blue wccs hat that matt is always wearing in every episode of the show and the smoking tire podcast well now you can buy it beautifully embroidered flex fit and uh, available now in our store head over to the smoking tire shop.com or go to the smoking tire.com and click on the shop tab get one for yourself while supplies last back to the show do you think you'll have to adjust how the electric turbo and the electric motor and the transmission respond at all or are they like is it one of those things where if they just get the signals from the engine and then they react accordingly and it's always appropriate? That's a fantastic question. Um, my guess is that, my hope, I should say, is that we don't have to touch that system. I would hope that there is a control strategy loop that it knows that if it's raised from the ECU and sent to that controller, that it can respond appropriately. Um, you know, I think it might be similar to like the VTGs, like the VTG turbos, you know, they're based, you know, they, they're variable, but in the ECU side of it, it's just a zero to a hundred pulse width modulation. So it's very easy, actually. You're not worrying about the angle of mm -hmm. the blade. So to that same effect, I would hope that it's something kind of similar, um, but we just won't know yet. But mm -hmm. I mean, that's going to be kind of the ultimate question is you know, if we modify the one, do we have to modify the other one? Yeah. So. It's probably simpler for something like a Corvette E-Ray, where, right. the, where the front wheels are driven by electricity, the rear wheels are driven by gasoline. Right. And they're two, they're two completely standalone right. systems. Right. You could, so you could, I just saw something on Instagram, someone put a big blower on an E-Ray. And so it's like a thousand, you know, combined horsepower. Right. But they didn't touch anything with the electrics. Right. Yeah. It's kind of like the Panameras. You know, Panameras mm -hmm. and Cayennes have been hybrid for a while, but we don't ever touch those systems, and we don't need to. And we just tune the, you know. Oh, okay. So in a Panamera, you could you tune the gas engine, yeah, and, yeah. The, and you don't have to do anything. No, we don't and touch that. And that e-motor is in the gearbox, too, or is that driven? Does that drive wheels? I can't remember. 
in the Panameras? I don't remember. My dad's Cayenne, which is not <laughs> a turbo. It's a regular Cayenne hybrid. Right. The e-motor is in the gearbox. Okay. And I know because I drove it the other day on electric mode, and it, it uses the gearbox. Yeah. Which, by the way, my dad's Cayenne, he's had it for a year now. He's had two Cayenne turbos in a row before that, and then I convinced him to get the hybrid. Right. And he absolutely loves it. Yeah. Uh, and he's gotten... In the last six months, he's gotten 80 miles a gallon in this in this Cayenne. That's pretty and epic. And for a lifetime, it's 50. Whoa. Which is pretty he, fucking He good. drives it in electric mode a lot. Yeah, he drives yeah. it. It's, it's, it's set to, to start in E mode and, you know, use the battery first, and he's go driving around town. I mean, uh, that's why I think, like, the hybrid thing is such a good way forward because, you know, people talk about, you know, EV cars so much, but, you know, it's... To having one one kind of you know powering device like electricity you know god forbid we go into war, world war three or whatever and you know power station gets knocked out it's like it's a better compromise to have two methods of drive you know gasoline and hybrid and if especially if it can you know help with emission stuff you know which it does yeah obviously but that seems a lot more logical in terms of not having to build an entire new grid to yeah. power everything and all that stuff, but I mean, we should build that system. We should, but in the meantime, right? The the hybrids is a great way to electrify people. Exactly, allow them to drive their short range drives on no emissions. Yeah, and then have the freedom to go where they need to go when they need to go. Right, without you know, and your net, you know, almost any any plug in hybrid version of any car. Net like doubles the fuel efficiency. Yeah, and they're fantastic in the real world, and, and it, they're nice to drive. Yeah, and it's like the, like with the nine nine two, you know, it, that bump in power is great. You yeah. know, it's it's a great way to boost the power. It's interesting that they have chosen to not allow you to drive on electric at all. Yeah, um, it's I as part of the story that I'm doing for for Road and Track about that car. I have I sent them a series of questions, and one of them was, "Why did you choose?" that because Artura 296, right. E-Ray, they all have, they're, they're not a lot, but they all have some electric only driving. Right. Ability. The range is pretty small, but yeah. 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 Um, the E-Ray is really small. It's like two miles. It's like nothing. But um, So with, you know, you, we were talking about McLarens last time. Have mm -hmm. you, have you messed with Arturas yet? Is that? Not yet. Okay. We are just kind of giving them some time. Um, they're a great car and great platform. We just... Um, I want to make sure that, you know, that all of, I'm not going to say kinks because a lot of it seems to be worked out, but we're just going to give them some time, um, just to kind of get, s see how it all goes. Um, sometimes with hybrid cars, like SF nineties and things like we've not had issues, but there's been some weird complexities. So we're kind of with the McLaren front, just waiting a bit more. But, you know, we've been doing a lot of the 750 stuff, um, and that's fantastic. pretty rad. Oh my, it's, it's a fantastic car. And, you know, we've been doing – we do a good amount of 765s and stuff, but it's pretty incredible how just epic those cars are, especially on track. I mean, they're they're really, really good. Well, the 750 has, like, the speed of the 765, yeah. but then also has the comfort modes that you right. want for regular car shit. Right, yeah. 765s are real aggressive. It is, know? it and is. And that's cool, but, it's, but as far as, like, you know, all the time, it's, like, a lot. Yeah, <laughs> it is, especially on the street. So yeah. it's the 750 is, like, a very well-rounded car. So yeah. um, it's a good upgrade from the 722 with the shorter gears and stuff. Yeah. I mean, that... That alone, like, makes such a world of difference yeah. um, from the 720. Yeah, I, I need to be able to spin the wheels in fourth. This right. is This is a right. must. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And in terms of, like, quarter mile times, I mean, just just the gear changes alone, I mean, cars are way quicker in quarter miles. What are the 750s that you're, that you're tuning doing in quarter mile? Uh, I don't know if we've had one fully run. John Hebel, my, one of my business partners, does a lot of that. He's been doing the 750 development stuff. Um, and he could say more to that. I'm trying to think, I know one just ran at Pocono, but it was like a half mile thing or like a roll race thing. Mm -hmm. uh, I'll get back to you that on, on that. I, I don't know what they run off the top of my head, but it's, it's close to, well, it should be close to an eight, nine or so. Wow. So 
Is that, what's the quickest seven six five you've done? Eights. Oh yeah, it was eights with like down pipes. I mean, literally had down pipes and a flash, and it. It's and either like pet Fred's drag car or something. Uh, no, just on R triple eights. Oh really? Yeah, as long as they do a burnout, you know, in burnout mode, and then run yeah. like as long as it cuts a one five sixty foot, like it's gonna run an eight. Wow. So that's, that's real fast. Yeah, I mean, yeah. for a car with not much done to it, like yeah. I mean, I think we've got seven six fives down in the eight sevens, eight eights. Like, wow. We've got somewhere on our page that shows all the records, but it's Those cars uh, are so fast. They are. They're yeah, really that's, fast. That's that's fucking nuts. Yeah. So. That's crazy. They just sell that to people. <laughs> yeah. Well, the same could be said about like a Tesla. Like. Oh plaid, yeah. Like, oh no. We just had the Lucid Sapphire. Like. Oh. That's like. That's really dangerous. Yeah. To my sell buddy at World has a has one. Chris Rado. Yeah. 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 He bought one. They're fucking nuts. Yeah. That's what he said. Yeah. I mean, he, he was a professional drag racer. Yeah. Yeah. He said they're crazy. Yeah, so. Oh shit. Sorry. We uh we uh we just had one and we took it to the drag strip at Sonoma. What did it run? I mean, with we with. It was like an it was uh, like nine first something? first run two people no <laughs> helmets and it was like a nine flat. Oh my god! Yeah, that was nuts. How much did those cars cost? Two hundred and forty nine thousand dollars. Cheaper than McLaren seven six five. They are cheap. Very true. Seven six five. Very very and true. In a year, it'll be about eighty nine grand. Right. <laughs> <laughs> so so you can have one very soon for very cheap. Yeah. Yeah. That's... But like, especially in the electric, like at least in the in the McLarens, like it's. It is very fast, but it actually feels even like faster yeah. and crazier. Yeah. The 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 electric cars, they're they're so quiet. They're so sort of planted. Although the Sapphire did move around quite a bit in the quarter mile. It did move. Yeah, it moved huh. around a little bit. Um, That's terrifying. Yeah, but you you have no idea how fast you're going. I mean, you just there's no frame of reference. Right, right. There's no sound. It's just no gears. all torque all the time. Just a yeah. straight line of torque. The number of times on the road course, I had to look at the speedo to go. What? How fast am I going? I got yeah. no idea. And I go, oh, I mean, yeah. frequent. Oh, 130. Right. Oh, okay. Yeah. Yeah. It's it's hard because like you drive a car on track and you know with internal combustion cars, you can kind of start to get the feeling of where you're at in the rev yeah. range and how fast you're going just by the noise. Yeah. There's no noise. Like this is the third gear corner. This is the right, fourth gear corner. Right. Is, an electric car, you have none of that. Yeah, yeah, I don't know that, if I'd want to turn an electric car going that fast, but that's why I I really like this the new Hyundai the Ionic 5N which has the synthetic yeah, gears yeah. because it has that thing that you need right. in order to place yourself properly on the track. So the Lucid is it just one one oh my god one endless fucking wave of torque. Did you find a top speed on it? We don't have room for that. Okay. It, I mean, they say it'll do 200 miles an hour. I believe it. I don't see why it wouldn't. Right. I mean, the fucking thing. Just go. You should see. You know, allegedly, a hundred to a hundred and fifty, you you cannot believe. Yeah, I, I, mean, I probably need to drive Chris's when we go there on you Thursday. Should, you should Good. try it. Yeah, because it's really a different. You know. Yeah, I'll, I'll text him because now I need to. I need yeah. to see this. It's like, why are you selling this to people? Right. What, is, <laughs> what are we doing here? Even if you put it in like what they call, I think it's called smooth mode or something. Like whatever comfort mode is. Sure. Is seven hundred horsepower. And, and it's like, if you fucking smash the throttle in smooth mode, it's like, whoa, okay. You know, you're still probably running like tens. Chris was saying it has like some like torque vectoring where you can turn and like accelerate and it'll yeah. just turn. Yeah. So it has, it's got three motors, right? So two motors on the rear axle. Right. So it can, it can overdrive the outside one while underdriving the inside one. So it's like a... It's the most active of torque vectoring. Wow. It is as active as torque vectoring can be because it can yeah. overdrive one while sure. breaking the other. Yeah. It's like an e-diff that is more precise than any e-diff can be. Right. You know? That's absolutely wild. It's two e-differentials, basically. Rivians can do it, too, because yeah. they have four motors. And, okay. and Remax can do it also. But, yeah, but, like, not a lot of cars can do that. Right. Yeah. It's fucking nuts. Yeah, that is nuts. Yeah. So, yeah, it's, you know, 250 grand most spent. But um, so like uh, so, what else is coming through the pipeline? Is there any other are, are there new, like, new projects that are? I mean, are we doing anything fun with with RSs or any of the naturally aspirated cars, or is there not much on the table there? We are. We've started doing more four RSs and three RSs. Um, those cars are a little bit trickier right now because we we basically have to unlock them, and it's a long process. So. 
and on a lot individual of individual car level. Yeah, like the ECU has to come to us, and then uh, we have to do some things to it. it it's pretty time consuming to unlock them, to be honest. Um, at least right now, uh, we can unlock them. Uh, we've done probably probably ten or so total. Um, but the game, I mean, it's actually pretty astonishing. I actually did one before I came here, mm. um, so. I should see it on the dyno tomorrow, but I mean the car that the last one we did on the dyno picked up forty wheel horsepower. Oh, I mean well, that's quite a is, bit for a naturally aspirated yeah, engine. That's a I lot. I mean, to be honest, I wasn't you know and that's it's not a marketing thing. It, it truly made forty wheel horsepower, and I mean honestly, I couldn't believe it. I was like, is this did really? it require changing any other mechanical parts or is that no? Just it like, had an exhaust on it. Yeah. Um, I don't remember whose, but yeah, I mean, it made a ton That's of power. Sweet. Yeah, wow. 4S is pretty good too. It's somewhere, it's a bit lower than that, but it, you know, the GT3s, we find a good amount of power in those cars, even being NA, more than, than I just, I constantly think, you know, oh, it'll make 10 horsepower. It's just, you know, like they're already so strung out. It's like, well, how much more can they make? Yeah. But the, the 3RS, I mean, Jesus Christ, it, like to pick up 40 more horsepower, like, you know, on nine, just 93. Yeah. So, I mean, that's, that's pretty, pretty impressive. Cool. Yeah. yeah. But, yeah, I mean, we've been doing quite a bit with that, um, working on new custom features. So things like um, map switching so we can change calibrations just with the cruise control. Um, Is that still the method, the cruise control? Th for this, yeah. Are there, um, are there other innovative ways to change maps? We could. As long as something is coming over can, we could devise some method but it's nice on cruise control because you can move it and you know we take over the tack mm -hmm. so it tells you which map slot you're in right so you can visually see like okay i'm in two or i'm in three yeah um things like that so and then more uh, ethanol based stuff you know e85 to you know potentially doing flex fuel those are a little bit more difficult not so much in the code sense but the the um if a car is able to handle that. Like a good example is like the 992 turbo can't run full E5. It doesn't have enough fuel system while mm. the 992 Carrera can run E85. So oh, that's interesting. Um, you know, but what we don't want is a guy with a turbo to go and try and fill up on, with E85 because then it just, things just runs lean. And so we have to create protections against that stuff. So oh, okay. more of that, you know, kind of stuff. Um, we're going backwards a little bit. Uh, we're doing, uh, we are releasing this uh, hopefully next week, but um, not on 1.2, um, because we never have really done that, but we're going back and doing those, because we do a lot of, um, we do a lot of, like not just 901.2s, but we've been doing a ton of GT2 RS club sports. Oh. So like I flew to Panama for a day and did like a, a guy that's tracking in a South American series, uh, Kevin. Um, I went out and supported his GT2 RS Club Sport Evo, the Mante car. Yeah. That they built, whatever. I mean, in Panama like City. Five, yeah, in Panama, and a racetrack outside of Panama City. But I mean, we've done. What, I mean, between race, like what Donahue. Racetrack? What racetrack is outside Panama City? Do you remember the name of it? Autodroma. I it, I don't remember the name of it. Yeah. It's brand. They were it's literally making the track and they were running on it. Oh. So it was there was <laughs> dust every. I mean. Sounds like Panama. It sounds like God, Panama. I want to go back to Panama so bad. We were there in 2013, and it was really fun. We had a good time. We met some really cool car enthusiasts, yeah. built some crazy shit down there. But yeah. there wasn't a lot of places to drive it, and we were like, man, I wish there was a racetrack here. Yeah, so they're, they're trying to get it, like, F FIA certified, I uh -huh. guess. And, like, it's – I think it was a racetrack, but it was pretty abandoned or run down. Oh, you think it's that it. one? Yeah. I we think saw it's... one that was like a drug lord's private racetrack yeah, that was like abandoned. I think it might be the same one. No way. I think it might be. Oh, cool. That would be rad. It was, was a big grandstand. Yeah, yeah. That's, yeah, that's yeah, it? Yeah, 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 that's oh, it. Oh, cool. I'm pretty sure – I'm like 90% sure oh, that's that the same one. that would be awesome if they, re if they actually yeah, so finished they, that. They, they, so they yeah, built one track. Yeah, it's like 20 miles outside of town. Yeah, yeah, and now they're they're already working on the second track. Oh, cool! So it's it's a pretty fast track. Um, it's not crazy technical, but it's a neat track. I mean, I did a ride along, and then yeah. I was like, "Get me the fuck out of this car!" But Panama City is um, pretty cool. I didn't. I mean, I literally I spent twenty four hours oh, there. Man. I went to 
do this car, and then the next morning I was on a plane out left. Oh, next time you go, you got to try the coffee. The best coffee in the fucking world. Down yeah. There. The Esmeralda Geisha. It's so fucking good. Oh, it's a totally okay. different level of coffee. Really? Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's like it's literally the most expensive coffee in the world. Like a cup of it down there is probably like twelve or fifteen dollars. Is that the one where like the bats? It's not the monkey shit. Okay, one. it's, the, yeah, it's yeah, more you know where I was going with that. than the monkey shit one. Really? Do you, did you find it? So yeah, that is, is the place. Panama. Yeah, that's the place. Oh yeah, on the right. That's that big old yep, school grandstand. Yep, yep. Yeah, this was the spot. Yeah. Yeah, so that's where we were racing, but we sort of like tried to sneak into this place when we were down there uh, twelve years ago, and uh, we sort of got adjacent to the property, right. but didn't quite sneak in. But yeah, that's it. Look at that. Yeah, see, so like they redid all the track, but when we were there, they were running <laughs> one of the dusty. first. <laughs> I mean, the car came back and it was just covered in dust. I mean, um, we ended up killing a fuel pump, a low pressure fuel pump. Because somehow so much dust had gotten into the fuel tank, oh, the sucks. fuel cell, that yeah. it killed the low pressure pump. Whoa. Yeah. It looks like they've copied corners from various yes. F1 tracks is what it looks yes. like. Yes. But that's okay. Yeah. No, it's fine. I mean, is that a go-kart track over on the side there yeah, too? Yeah, that's maybe? what it looks like. This is a final drawing for sure yeah, yeah. because I can assure Master you plan it's not quite like that yeah. yet. But yeah, it's a, but it's a cool still, track. It's a track in fucking Panama. Mm -hmm. So good for them, dude. Yeah. Hopefully they can start doing, you know. Remember the arepas we bought fucking across, across the, street. the street from that place? Yeah. Oh. That was, yeah. All That's right. That's the car. It, that. Oh, was, there it is. Yeah. Yeah. Bitchin'. Is that the car? What the hell car is it? Well. That way it looks no, wait, that's wait. not. That's a car. That looks like a CGI'd. <laughs> yeah. Car. Oh, that is the car. The the that, that car one? right there. Yeah, yeah okay. that's the car that, that I went car, down there. That to other car there looked like a fucking CGI like the front of a 911 oh, you can in the see back I, of something. I made him else. tag us cuz they kept not tagging us. <laughs> <laughs> I think you I kept, were in the opening shot. Oh, cool. We got to go back to Panama and drive this racetrack now. Well, I went and it was really hot. <laughs> yes. It yeah. was like brutally hot. Yeah, you got to go in the right season. Yeah. <laughs> it's, it's pretty tough down there. But man, would it be worth it for the coffee? Mm. God, <laughs> dreaming about that fucking coffee. So yeah, I wish I could have spent more time there. It's a really neat place. Really do nice you, people. Do you do that a lot? You fly in somewhere and One ma map someone's car for yeah. racing or whatever? Yeah, I did it for um, Ibrahim Canoe, mm. uh, E Canoe. You know, he has a huge oh my God, stable. Did you go to Bahrain for I went one to Bahrain day? for one day. Oh. It was the, like <laughs> two days before Christmas. Um, I flew in, and then I have like a whole schedule for this. I fly in, we test on the dyno that night that I get there. Then I'll sleep during the day, and then we'll go to the track that night, and then my f flight is always at 1 a.m. in the morning to come back. Whoa. <sighs> yeah. So I one year I had to go. This is like three or four years ago. My wife had to meet me at my parents' house in Colorado because I found out two days before that he wanted to go race. And so I got on a plane, flew Holy there. Holy shit. 24 hours, came back, and I flew. ended up flying back to meet my wife and my family. Wow. Can this not be done remotely? It can now. A lot. It, it's honestly, it's a lot more. It's now remote, um, especially because we write our own software and people. We can send calibrations and stuff. Yeah. Sometimes with certain cars like the car in Panama, if it's a new team and a fresh team and they don't know much about the car, or it's some people just like the comfort of you being there. Sure. And yeah. again, while we don't do it as much anymore, um, it happens occasionally. Um, so we do try Man, to avoid Bahrain it if we can. Is far for it for is not one close. Night. It That's is not close. Fucking far. Yeah, because it's what from Arizona. Can you get a direct here? flight from no. Phoenix? No. Yeah. It's to Heathrow, yeah. and then it's another eight nine hours from Heathrow yeah. to Bahrain. That's, so that's it's, a way. It's a doozy. That's a way. Yeah. 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 What's the weirdest thing you've flown and like tuned, or in general, I guess? Man. I, I, a lot of weird ones. I used to tune cars years ago for a drug dealer in Mexico. I mean, 100% drug dealer. Um, I stopped that because it was really bizarre. And I was pretty young. Um, I used to go to Mexico a lot to do calibration. Um, like Mexico City, uh, Guadalajara, like that, that a lot. I used to go back, or I used to go when I was younger and drag race in the Caribbean. Whoa. So one guy who basically had a, owned like all the quarries that made the roads, he had one of the, like in 2009, had a GTR, a R35. Yeah. 
And so we would go to, they'd just shut down the highway and we would just run this GTR. So I'd go down there a lot. Um, that was kind of wild. Um, like on like Caribbean, I like, I was mm-hmm. like on Barbados it, or something. It was Martinique and, um, oh, what is the other one? Yeah, it's like it, they're both French owned islands. The name Saint is escaping me. No, I, I almost want to say it's not Guadalupe. Maybe it is Guadalupe. I don't I, know, it's that's been pretty, so long. Still pretty crazy. Yeah. I mean, we used to travel a ton. We just, I've kind of stopped now, but. Next um, time you go to Panama, you should do the drag racing school buses. Oh, tune one of those they, things. They street, well, I was say, like, race, did you ever tune a weird buses. build? You know, like, did someone ever call you and say, I put this engine on this turbo on this thing, which is a bad idea. I need your help. We did it. I did a helicopter um, oh, okay. with a Subaru engine, which is like a lose-lose. <laughs> um, I never actually got to see that one to the Paging end. Cletus. He, he, <laughs> that customer had kind of a budget, and it was just this turned into kind of a safety thing yeah. it was like you, was you need to do end, this the but, side of a mountain yeah because like, <laughs> he had like a private private uh place in montana with that had an airstrip yeah um and but the budget just you know <laughs> in terms of safety like it what he, he wanted to use wasn't enough control so it was like, well, you need to use something better. And he's like, it's not in the budget. And it's like, well, well, you're going to also, die. how am I going to tune it? <laughs> yeah. Like, I'm not going to go flying around on this thing, like knowing like <laughs> <I> do <a laughs> pull. the motor might pop and I might die. So yeah. it was like, yeah, yeah. It's a lot yeah. Of liability for you as yeah, well. Yeah, exactly. So it's, that was yeah. a weird how, one. How do you okay. tune an aircraft? Have you ever done that before? No. Like, I mean, I, you know, a plane. I, well, I know, you know, I don't know if you've. Ever heard of Shane Tecklenburg? He's a huge Motec tuner, like uh-uh. fantastic calibrator. Um, I saw he did a just recently. Has been doing a P fifty one Mustang airplane. What with Motec? Yeah, it's really That's neat. Like it cool. looks great. Like it seems to run great. But with the original engine, or does it like? I'd have to look in like the specifics. I'm not. I'm, I'm not really sure, but I mean, it That's flies. I guess cool. the question is like, if you're trying to just optimize power output of an engine then you know you can presumably do that and then my my thought would be are there other variables that come with aircraft like okay if you bank like right. oil yeah. like I don't, I don't know if there's any active oil pressure that needs to be managed or is it no 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 we just need it to make the power that's it i would assume it has some sort of sump but yeah it's like all those like edge cases where it's <laughs> yeah. like you don't remember that one and it's like well then you might die yeah so what about boats a boat no Never done boats, which that industry is huge. Which is that's that surprises me because yeah. there's a lot of like modified engines that are in boats. There is, and I think that's just a whole nother kind of, you know, industry of people that do that that are really into the marine stuff. And I just never, yeah, got into that stuff. So, um, yeah, I've got a buddy Stephen who, you know, his his dad he passed last year, but um, you know he had a lot of crazy like you know boat could do 150 miles an hour yeah some of that shit is yeah. nuts yeah so. but you can also buy you know super powerful engines now that you don't really have to do too much yes right. but so can the police so we are looking for something <laughs> a little bit better <laughs> uh let's see what uh, the people have to say let's go to the patreon of course if you want to ask questions for the show it's patreon.com slash the smoking tire podcast also get an ad free listening experience get the live stream get the show ahead of time and a whole bunch more stuff uh darian says is there anything about tuning culture that annoys you pops and bangs (laughs) i want that to go away forever yeah um that is the most just obnoxious thing and and like you know i go to europe go like wherever i go i'll f- hear it i'll see it some little one liter siot and it's got fucking pops and bangs on it and it that just whole thing needs to die um preach yeah yeah yeah, preach, yeah. i mean it's just that that is something that absolutely drives me crazy and i what i do fire hope- tune it's, it, it's right there it's right there i mean it's just you know, it's it's hard when, you know, we work on these, like, amazing cars. It's hard to just, all they want to do is go to a car show and rev it and spit fire out. And it's yeah. like, well, you know, it's half a million dollar car. It's like, don't you want to drive it and enjoy it? But yeah, to each their own, I suppose. Yeah. But, 
And honestly, some of the stuff like the pops and bangs can be, it's actually not very good for cars um, because, you know, you're retarding the uh, ignition timing so far that it does start to you know, bring up EGTs and stuff like that. So it can cause damage, um, especially over time. So well, what would it damage? Let's tell the people so they stop. Turbochargers uh, can damage exhaust valves. Um, we've actually seen it in McLaren uh, start to bend exhaust valves. Um, from it just being too aggressive. So we really try and, I mean, we try not to do it. And I do th- I do feel like it's going away, but. Yeah, li- maybe a little bit. I feel like the, I feel like BMWs are really, really holding on. The yeah, they're holding on. Community. They're yeah, really they're holding on for dear life. Really yeah, yeah, on. unfortunately. <laughs> um, That's a good one though. Yeah. Uh, it, let's see, we'll save that one for the, later. For okay. later. Uh, Alejandro says, craziest, ECU cheat or hack you've seen in either pro racing or someone showed up to the shop? This question can be interpreted in a couple ways. Right. Like hack job meaning like botch or has someone, has anyone ever brought a car in or showed you some kind of tuning where you were like, wow, that's really fucking cool? Where they've done something that really amazed you? I'm trying to think. I mean... The ECU cheat thing I could speak to you, but I can't publicly. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so I would love to tell that story, but I absolutely cannot. Um, I've not seen anything come in that's like off the top of my head that's been super crazy. Hack job wise, I have seen some really terrible stuff. I mean, people use speaker wire for injectors. Um, I mean, I have seen just about everything. Um, you know, typically, especially when I worked at shops like AMS, you know, we did pre-dyno inspections for every car because you don't want to get a car on the dyno and it have a bunch of mechanical issues. Yeah. So we would, had a checklist. And I mean, half the cars would fail that came in because, and we saw just crazy stuff. You know, people would cheap out on that, but pay us a bunch of money to tune the car. But yeah. it's like, well, we can't tune the car if with fucking speaker wire yeah. or injectors, you know, it's like... So, yeah, we've seen quite a bit of that through the years. I mean, my Ferrari 328 had interior door cards literally made of duct tape. Someone made a sheet of duct tape. It was this big. I made the whole interior door card out of it. Yeah, it was was actually, it was so bad that it was impressive. Like the amount of effort. Why? I don't know. The amount of effort it would have taken to do that, they could have just gotten the right thing done for sure. And it's a Ferrari. And it was a Ferrari. Yeah, yeah. (laughs) Yeah. That's insane. Yeah, it was wild. <laughs> yeah. They could they could have gotten a sheet of plastic, which wouldn't have been right. No. But they could have cut it, and it would have been better than individually laying strips of duct tape. Well, the like right, they were shingling the, ironically, the, the right thing, it is a sheet of plastic. But it's it's like, just a sheet of plastic that says Ferrari on it. No, I know. <laughs> they should have repli- they should, yeah. they tried to replicate yeah. the OEM. Yeah, and, right. You know. Yeah, you could have gotten close with a hefty bag. But, like, <laughs> That's what I'm saying. instead they used duct tape. It yeah. It's crazy. Yeah. Uh, we already, I think we already covered, uh, Chris Navio's question here. Uh, Trevor, we can save his questions. He's asking, unless you have a, do you have an opinion on wool seats? Can't say I do. Well, you fucking should, because they're awesome. Really? Yeah, Volvo's wool seats are really, really good. Huh. Uh, Philip LaFranca says, uh, Mitch, what is your favorite car to tune? <sighs> Honestly, I gotta say probably the 9N 2.1. I yeah. mean, I they're fantastic cars, and the, sh- the Carreras or the Turbo, both. I yeah. mean, they're both similar in strategy, um, just overall control strategy. I mean, to be honest, I'm kind of obviously biased towards the Porsche stuff. Um, you know, it's uh, it's what I've done for a long time, along with McLaren. But like I said, John is does you know the. 99.9 percent of our mclaren stuff these days and he's fan, you know just phenomenal with it but yeah i mean just i love tuning porsches like i really do i enjoy them they're you know like the gt3 to see it make 40 50 horsepower that's i mean that's fantastic you know what do you think if you're willing to do some basic bolt-ons and tuning what 992 is the best sort of value like, should do I do a, if I went and got a Carrera T with a stick? Yeah, is that is that the move, or should I get should I upgrade to like a GTS? Well, that's kind of the thing is what we've got a lot of customers doing is buying T's 
and bases and putting the GTS turbos on them. Yeah. They're just a direct bolt-on. But then, I mean, we can make the same power as a, or more than a stock, you know, Turbo S. Yeah. So for not very much money. You and rear-wheel drive with a stick. Right, right. So it's, Is you that know, car fucking super fast? A, yeah, a yeah. T, the, a, I mean, Scott out there could tell you. Uh, we did uh, uh, John at flat six. I mean, they're making, those cars are making like six, 700 horsepower almost on some of these builds. Like wow. methanol, bigger turbos. Like, yeah. I mean, that's a lot of power for that three liter. Yeah. Right. Yeah. So. Yeah. Um, Dre in Houston uh, bought your tune after on his 992S based on your last appearance. Uh, question is, have you found any other unlockable, quote, unlockable features on the 992, like the PSE valve open on the current tune? Um, what is what is the what is the PSE valve open? So that's a great question. In the stock calibration on the 992s with the exhaust button, the actual mapping of it isn't what I'll call one to one. So like when you press the button, it doesn't just open the exhaust. Right. It has this really weird mapped out um, zero to a hundred percent open. Uh, so like as the load and the the engine speed change, it opens it more or less. Mm -hmm. The PSE valve mod is simply when you press the button, it's open. Yeah. And it is just that way. That's so it's, what Rick did with my car. Right. right. My because my the 718, it's like if it's open exactly the same. It's open at idle, but then it closes again for a bit and then reopens. Yeah. It's weird. It is. And it, it we found we've actually got a video on YouTube, but um just in doing the PSE valve mod, you actually gain about 12 or 13 horsepower on a turbo car just doing that by keeping the valves open. Hmm. Um, so just why because, do you think Porsche does, do you think it's for drive-by noise regulations or something? Is I there, think is it's there a probably reason? that or potentially maybe emissions, but it's probably mostly just as a, you know, don't want to make too much noise until it's wide open throttle mm -hmm. type type thing. But it's, an, it's, it's kind of wonderful because it's like you can turn the knob and it's, quiet but then it's like you can you just add an exhaust system by turning the knob to sport or whatever yeah. so it's nice because um if you don't want it to be quiet you can make it you know put it back into normal and then once you go into sport then it's right. you know, loud and whatever else yeah so. that's good are there uh, so are there any quote unlockable features i'm trying to think of unlockable the other ones. is a weird word but is like are there other features like that yeah we've we do quite a few now it's um, free free rev and neutral. So the 992 factory, oh. if you're like in neutral, it'll only go to 3,000 yeah, RPMs. Yeah, yeah. So that's a weird one, but um, a lot of guys ask for that. Um, I'm trying to think. Uh, that's a good one. It is. Yeah. Um, can you can you change it so that the car doesn't default to start up in with stop start activated? Yes, that's you another can, huge so you can eliminate one. Eliminate that. Yeah. Can you do that on my car on Thursday? Yes, we can. Oh, thank God. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Cool. Yeah, yeah, that that one's like a very very yeah. I mean, outside of PSE, like that's probably the most requested is the start stop. Yeah. Uh, oh, it, I'll tell you what, in that GTS <laughs> hybrid stop start, I'd probably leave it alone okay. because it with that e motor in the gearbox, it doesn't. It's like it, seamless. It's so seamless. Yeah. It just it doesn't. <laughs> it yeah. just it just goes from not running to running yeah. instantly. It's real cool. Yeah, it's not like our rental car out there that when it shuts <laughs> off. And, yeah. yeah, yeah, no. I mean, there's some cars where I stop, start, stop. It's like, all right, fine, whatever. But a sports car, like, fuck yeah. Yeah, yeah. no. There's you no ever been in an Aventador with start, stop? No. They pro. It has it, but they the conditions that need to be met in order for it to actually shut the engine off are right. like hilarious. It's like oh one out of a hundred. You know, you could you don't touch it. You drive it around for a week. Maybe it'll do it once. That's bizarre. It's really strange. That's a bizarre car. <laughs> yeah. Uh, here's a good one. Dane Blue says after uh, installing your tune in my uh, 911 GTS, I'll be a supporter for life. Customer service is off the charts. Uh, I recently traded up to a new GT3 RS, and I remember you being very pro race fuel for tracking the 992s. Does that sentiment apply to a stock 3 RS as well, or just the tuned turbo cars? Fantastic question. Um, so we typically tell guys, especially with um, turbo cars, uh, to just use 
the best fuel they can find if they're going on track. And it's for pretty obvious reasons. You know, they get really hot um, doing lap after lap, especially, you know, at like Coda in, in August. Mm-hmm. You know, it's um, the same thing applies for pretty much any car. We just tell people to use the best fuel possible. Um, it's it's kind of just a safety buffer, um, even in the NA cars, because they can start to get hot. I mean, they do get hot and um, power, they'll start pulling power back. Um, and we do leave all that stuff there. So it will start to protect itself if it gets like too hot. But the nice thing about the race fuel and either tuned or in like the 3RS is with a better fuel, it's going to stay more consistently quick for longer. Mm. Um, and that's why, yeah, I would say whatever you can find, you know, it's, I don't really like people going out on track with tuned cars on 91, like, cause the fuel's so terrible. Yeah. Um, and if they do, what we'll typically do is we'll make a calibration for the track. Like it's, especially for like McLaren guys, um, you know, that do track their cars quite a bit. We will make a track specific map that's not running quite as much boost just so they don't overheat and have issues. So, yeah. um, that's a good one. Yeah. yeah. So yeah, if you can find question. if you can find race gas, get race gas. Yes. Yeah. And the hotter it is temperature wise, yeah. the more you want the yeah. race gas. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Uh, Jake Soares, I think we kind of already addressed some of this, but are you able to explain in simple terms why it takes so long to break into certain ECUs for flashing? Is it a trend with only certain OEMs, or is the industry in general trying to keep their ECUs locked more? Yeah, that's a great question, especially that he mentions the eight YRS three because. Uh, my other company, uh, Dino Spectrum, that I have that does all the Audi stuff mm. with John Banks and Isle of Man, um, that's actually one we were talking about today. Um, all manufacturers are doing more security. And now with this UN f- pass thing, um, you know, Porsche had to recall a bunch of cars because they weren't up to these standards that the UN set. So more manufacturers are going to this because with more cars that can do things like OTA updates, they don't want people messing with that stuff. Um, and it's for good reason, especially with self-driving cars. It's, you know, if a car is left vulnerable, then it can inherently cause some dangers there. Yeah. Um, especially if somebody could connect to the OTA update and if they want to do something nefarious, it'd be really bad. So... Wait, so so, so the... The difficulty of tuning a car was kind of lumped into the cybersecurity stuff with the UN, with the Cayman and the Boxster. That the the Macan, what it was a Macan and the Cayenne. Um, no, and the Seven One Eights. Okay, in yeah. in yeah, in so Europe, that yeah. was wow. due to this kind of updated UN regulation, and we call them they're they have a name. They're called UN ECE gateways, um, and they're now found in basically all 2024 um, Cayennes. I believe Panamera's, you know, Audi's, like RSQ8s, RSQ7s, pretty much anything in that MLB Evo platform um, has this gateway. So, and more manufacturers will start, you know, they're locking stuff down. They don't want to deal with warranty concerns, and it's, you know, I understand why. Yeah. So. Um, Oh, Caleb wants to thank us. He used off the record to get out of a ticket. Shout out to him. Nicely done. Nice. Always fight your tickets. Okay. I, they're a big sponsor. Yeah. Offtherecord.com slash TST or code TST pod on the Off the Record app. Um, every uh, That's the first one in a while that's been a Patreon comment, but I get emails every week about people using Off the Record. Uh, Tim A., can 911 Carreras with PDK can be tuned to the level of shift speed and engagement of the GT3 and GT3 RS? The, <clears throat> the answer to that is yes and no. In the earlier versions, like the 991.1 and the 991.2 PDK, we actually, that's especially on the, the point one, that car PDK flash is night and day in terms of shift speed. And it comes basically from the GT3 stuff. So you're basically you, just putting the GT3 tune in the regular. Yeah, and it's night and, and day. Uh-huh. Like, I mean, literally is not even close to the same. So it's yeah. basically the same shift speed as the GT3. So uh-huh. yes, we can in some of the earlier cars. The newer cars, not so much. They shift pretty quick already. Um, the GT3 is a bit faster, but it's not the same Well, there's level. also a 
it's a slightly different bit of hardware. There's it is. seven gears instead mm-hmm. of eight. So there's you know, and there's there's other different stuff there. There's there is. different flywheels and different shit like computers. That. So yeah. now like the GT four R S has what we call a PDK one, but the GT threes and um, the 992s have what we call a PDK-2. These are two completely separate controllers. Mm. Like, they're completely different code. One's b- built by ZF, the PDK-2. Uh, the other one's Continental. Oh, really? Yeah. Mm. So it's things like that where they're quite different. Hmm. Interesting. Uh, racing for tips. Have you ever played with any eCVT or CVT mapping? Nope. <laughs> nope. I have not. I yeah. mean, I just... It's a not my favorite transmission. Um, Shocking. I, I don't see. I mean, to be fair, I don't see many CVTs in cars that like high performance cars. Um, you guys would know more about that, but I don't think it's a WRX. I mean, what's what's the fastest car that has a CVT right now? So I do know that Cobb is flashing a CVT in the WRX is now, I believe. Really? And I think they're doing. I think they do okay with them yeah but i've never i've never touched doesn't one. seem interesting to me that would be an interesting dyno chart though yeah. wouldn't it yeah like, that would be a, i'd like to see what the dyno curve looks like on a cvt yeah um let's see jadis combs with nearly aspect nearly every aspect of modern cars being computer controlled does that put more responsibility on the tuner to create more of the feel that is naturally present in analog cars I don't know how much you as a tuner could do to improve feel. You'd be surprised. And yeah. that's actually kind of a good question because what we get sometimes, and this speaks to a lot of just how different people like the feel of their car. So we get asked sometimes, you know, in like the turbos and stuff, if, you know, the, the torque gain is quite large, let's say it's 80 to 100 foot pounds. Some people don't like that punch. They would rather it feel more linear, Mm -hmm. like almost like an NA car. But so we do sometimes make calibrations for people that want it. They don't want that punch. They want just power to carry all the way up. Um, And so we do actually tune for that um, if people request it. You know, if people are like, most people just want like Most people want it to feel more powerful. Exactly. But some people, they want, especially if it's like rear wheel drive and they just blow the tires off. Yeah. They don't want that punch. They want more of a just natural, natural, like linear power band. I'd probably want that for a front wheel drive car, actually. Yeah. 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 Well, it's like we talked about the early turbocharged M3s, M4s. Yeah. You know, huge torque from near 1200 RPM and it was too much. It overwhelmed the rear tires. Right. So I think it's more progressive now. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, those F80s are better with like a big turbo swap and a little more lag. Actually, yeah, really. Yeah, the 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 stock turbos were already BMW from the factory was like all the torque right now, wow. and then people would tune them and it would be like even more torque right now. And so if you put a bigger turbo on it, it just naturally developed a little more lag. Sure, sure. And it actually gave it a little more drivability. Right, right. Uh, Flannel Bob, this one's. Interesting. What is the most expensive sensor you've ever seen being used on a car? That's a great question because we're doing some sensor stuff right now. Um, the big ones are the um, that I personally have on my car is actually um, is a uh, an INS. It's a, uh, a sensor that uh, one of my good friends actually makes, Sander. Um, he it's it's a GNSS system. It's we use them in race cars basically so that we can get um, accurate uh, speed. It's basically a six axis gyro, mm-hmm. um, but it it's fast. It's four hundred hertz, so the sample rate's really really good. So um, and that actually is a cheaper version of the Kissler one, but it's these are sensors that OEMs use. Um, so Sanders is around five thousand. I think the Kissler is oh. around like fifty. Oh, okay. Um, and they OEMs use them in development. They use not it for in development. Everybody's correct. Car. Yeah, yeah. But they're really useful in race cars because, um, you know, w- we use them at Pikes Peak. It gives an accurate ground speed when it's hard to do that with an all-wheel drive car, hmm. um, because typically you would use something like an optical sensor that mm-hmm. points down at the ground. But there's issues with that because if and I was just actually talking about this the other day in the, like the Lambos and stuff that can do wheelies really well. 
uh, or do wheelies yeah. when they're drag racing. Um, with systems like the INS, you can control through like the MoTeC or whatever, you can control pitch. Mm. So you can make it so the car doesn't do a full on wheelie. It can pull back power. It'll do and a two degrees try of wheelie. Exactly. So yeah. you can kind of hold it. Is there an optimum angle of wheelie for a Lambo? You could ask. You could ask <laughs> those guys. I mean, I, I know that Sander told me the pitch, the amount of pitch in degrees is not nearly as much as you would think it is. Uh -huh. um, I don't know exactly how much they try and hold, but um, mm. the problem with the optical sensors is that when they go up, it, the too much light on them, it it affects the sensor reading. So then the INS just needs to be mounted in the car. Yeah. Um, and it works great. The other big one is um, uh, in cylinder pressure transducers. Um, that's they're like that's like a critical thing, but they're so expensive that nobody uses them. Um, you know, that is like very much right now pretty much only OEMs or like high level engine development companies will use them. But um that's where they put you know pressure sensors inside and they can tell you can tell like everything that's happening inside of a cylinder so you know if it's you too like, lean wow. too much boost too much whatever is it can you like do engines like have room for that or do you have to have basically a throwaway engine in order to do that that you're drilling holes into that's a fantastic sensor? question so um what most have been doing till now is that they're drilling the sides of the heads of these cars and yeah. putting sensors in them. Um, there is now, though, uh, companies that make, they're modifying stock spark plugs mm. so that they can, you know, you screw the spark plug down Smart. in it. Yeah. And the sensor goes in the ring, yep. in the hole. Wow. Yeah. The spark, oh, plug, yeah. spark plug's that already makes, in there. Yeah. That makes more sense. Otherwise, yeah. you need to have a throwaway engine. Exactly. Yeah. And, yeah. yeah so that... Um, well, that's that's why only OEMs are doing it. Yeah. <laughs> and now, now these cheapers, there are... Uh, there are systems that are becoming cheaper and cheaper, but it's really something that, I mean, anybody, you know, airplanes, you know, that have a piston diesels, race cars that are, you know, IMSA cars, whatever, you know, any of these cars should have these systems because it tells you so much data, you know, like you can tell that a cylinder is going to fail before it does, mm -hmm. you know, just based on everything going on inside the cylinder. Yeah, and you can save the rest of the engine. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So it's, you know, it could be used in a lot of different applications. So. Yeah. Um, that will be a thing that, you know, a system where it comes down in price, I would say, very soon. Oh, cool. Um, I don't think Mitch is going to answer. Someone, someone wants you to tell, tell them what companies to not buy software I know exactly from. why they're doing this, too. Um, I am absolutely not commenting on this. <laughs> yeah, no. I know exactly why, but yeah. I am absolutely not yeah, doing this sorry, one. Sorry, bro. You have a company that does Audis, though. He's asking we do, for, and asking that's for, why. Asking for an Audi. Uh, do you have a program for a 2021 Audi S4? So I have another company with John Banks uh, in Isle of Man, and it's called uh, Dead Bee Flash. So we all we just make a flashing utility. Uh -huh. We don't with the DS1. You know, we manufacture that dongle. Now this is a software that's developed that can flash not just like the S4, but it can flash a ton of other cars. But um, in the S4, we don't make any calibrations though. It's simply something that somebody can buy a cable, plug in and have a pro tuner do. We don't do the pro tuning. The issue is in that market, those guys just keep going at each other because the cars keep, the motors keep popping. And so it's a big debate around oh, who's, who's, who's good, who's good and why, and who's, you yeah. know, and it's, so it's just like, yeah, I don't tune them, just <laughs> yeah. It's smart. Yeah, yeah. Just, yeah. Uh, that's funny. You can flash it with right. our tool. So yeah, you, <laughs> you make the wrench. You're not the mechanic. Exactly. Like, yeah, yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. So we understand the the reasoning for that question, but like, yeah, you're not. Yeah. No. Uh, last question. Is this the last one, Zach? It looks like yes. it is. Toblerone Malone nine nine one and nine nine two GT three Porsches with manual have the ability to no lift, upshift, and downshift at any RPM or throttle throttle position. Uh, I don't know why you would no lift downshift, but okay. Uh, is it possible to tune the 718 Spider or GT4 to have this feature? Andreas said the GT4 would get it, but it never shipped with it. Can you do a no lift shift on a 718? Yeah, we could with custom code. Yeah. <clears throat> um, yeah. I mean, no lift shift was stuff we used to do years ago in cars. We actually haven't been asked about it much. Because um, people aren't fucking drag racing manuals. Like, yeah, I mean... It gives a shit, really. Yeah, it is code that we could do. Um, 
we could add it. It's just honestly, like I said, it's never really been requested in those cars. Hmm. So interesting. Yeah. Um, well, I think we re- went around the world there once. Yeah, I liked it. That was good. That was good. Good. Yeah. Last words. No. All right. Just gonna enjoy this weather. <laughs> yeah. Before I go be, back to Phoenix. It's gonna be nice, and uh, and then we'll uh, we'll see you on Thursday at yep. the dyno. Yep. And we'll uh, we'll play around with my pink car. Yeah. We'll looking turn, forward to we'll it. We'll deactivate start stop. Yeah. Fuck yeah, dude. But we're cool. gonna leave the va- the one to one valve. The exhaust Yo, yeah, valve. Yeah. 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 That's yeah. that's already in. Yeah, I wouldn't and, have it any other way. Yeah. It's like it's like my favorite thing. Yeah. I mean, it's yeah. it makes sense that when I press the button, it's. Right. It's opens yeah. and stays open. That's how it should be. So, yeah. yeah. No reason not to. Yeah. Um, awesome. Well, uh, of course, uh, m dash engineering uh, dot com. Yeah. Dot us. Dot us. Yeah. M dot en- en- m engineering dot us. Excuse me. And uh, of course, on all the socials, m engineering. You know where you you know where to find this shit, guys. Oh, we got coffee now too. Our own. Uh, oh, is that branded what that coffee? Is? No, go to if you go to. I was saying that looks like a dongle. Platforms maybe. That's a dongle. Yeah. But if you go to platforms. You have a coffee. Look at coffee. What do you yeah, doing we, with the coffee? We uh, we partnered with Greater Goods to make just kind of a, because uh, we all like coffee. Lots of caffeine. Yeah. Tons, so, of, tons of fucking five hundred milligrams. Yeah. Tons of caffeine. But they uh, they they donate to uh, I, uh, rescue where I actually got one of my cats. So, oh, good. Yeah. How many cats do you have? Three now. Nice. Yeah. Nice. Yeah, that's my wife. You're but, getting close. Yeah, yeah. I got four. Yeah, I love cats. Though. I know. Yeah. I understand. Yeah. Believe me, we're in the same fucking mm-hmm. zone. So, all right, good. So, I'll I'll buy a bag to donate to cool. uh, to an animal shelter. That's all right. My cat uh, Monty's getting neutered tomorrow. Ooh. Mm. Kitten. Yeah. Little. Yeah. We just there's a whole kitten. fucking. I'll tell you the story, but the audience knows the story of this one. But like, okay. woof, literally found him under a truck. It was like this big. Aww. And very very cute. Caused a few problems, but we're good. He's okay. good now. Okay. He's fucking. He's a big boy now. So cool. yeah. Um, thanks, Mitch. Good to yeah, see yeah. you. Yeah. And uh, nice we'll see guys. you on the dyno on Thursday. Yeah. Thank you to our patrons for asking such good questions yeah. today. Great questions. And uh, we're back on Thursday with uh, Peter Atia in studio. He bought his ST. He got his ST. He took the delivery of it. Oh. Lots of things to talk about Whoa. with uh, with Peter Atia. All right. That's our show. See you later. Bye. Cool.